So the 980Ti Strix is next. So same thing as with all the other troubleshooting videos, we're first gonna take a multimeter and do some basic measurements to see if we can't find something super obvious. And then if we don't find anything, we would go to uh, turn the card on and see if everything works properly. However, um, there's one very glaring issue with the card right here because there's a memory module missing and this one looks very, very cooked. And I was told that this card has like two faulty memory modules on it. There's also a removed capacitor here and generally the card is just coated in flux and it, I think it went through an oven because this is melted and the PCB material darkened. Um, so of all the cards that I, that got sent in by um, a fan of the channel here, I think this is the one that's gonna be hardest to fix because there's probably, uh, there's eventually, uh, or more, what's the right word, there's potentially multiple problems with this one. And yeah, that can just be very, very hard to fix because you're not, you're not like looking for one issue, you're looking for multiple ones. And yeah. Um, but we're still gonna do our basic troubleshooting. So first we're gonna set the multimeter into beep mode. So if the probes touch, you get a long continuous beep like that. Sometimes you get a short beep. That doesn't mean anything. That's just the measurement being off for a couple seconds. If it's a long continuous beep, that's when you have a problem. So we wanna first test our main input rails. Um, so we're gonna test the two eight pin connectors, which provide 12 volts and then the PCI Express slot, which provides 12 volts and 3.3 volts. And we're gonna test this towards ground. Now these connectors are flipped, so the upper um, connectors are 12 volts. So yeah, we're gonna see. That looks good. That's also good. Just a short beep, a short beep is okay. You can also just test the fuses. Is, um, yeah, this should be one 8-pin, the other 8-pin, and then this should be PCI Express. So we're just gonna... Also test the other side in case the fuse is burned. But they look fine. They look mostly fine. Um, but like, yeah, still gonna counter check the actual connectors, but they're fine. Uh, let's counter check PCI Express. That's fine. And now I'm gonna have to look at, like, I could measure the pins directly, but I don't like measuring the pins directly because I'm always worried I'm gonna hit the wrong thing. However, I can't really see the 3.3 volts power plane here and I can't really find a very obvious capacitor. Oh, this is probably... Okay, these should probably be 3.3 volts, these capacitors. I'm gonna try these. And looks like we're good. Okay, so our main power inputs do not have a short from what we can see. So that is a good thing. And uh, now we go to measuring the output resistances from our different VRMs. So first the very big one, V-Core. Just gonna step one of the inductors here, and we have 4.3, three and a half ohms, or something like that. That's fine. Um, that's actually a bit high, I would think. Maybe this ground spot isn't that ideal. Let's try one of the screw holes. Now oh, this one's even worse. <laughs> try the O sheet itself. Yeah, no, okay, it's. Okay, but that looks fairly steady. So this is not shorted. This is an okay resistance for the core. Cores always have fairly low resistance and this is actually higher than I expected. I would have expected this to be around one ohm or maybe just half an ohm, but that is very obviously not shorted. So the next thing would be our memory phase. 20 ohms, that is a bit low. However, that is should still be all right. It's lower than I expected but um, depending on which generation of memory chips you're looking at and how, how big the array is, which this is a pretty big one, um, your resistance can change. And this is far away enough from a dead shot that I think this is probably okay. So then we have a PEX rail down here. 
And this looks like it's good. Yeah. 500, 600 ohms, I think that is fairly typical. So, that looks good. Uh, this one could be our 1.8 volts rail, uh, supporting voltage for our memory chips. And this one also looks like it's okay. Ah, so 750 ohms. That looks okay. Alright, is there anything more on this that we could test? I don't think there is. So, yeah. I mean, given that the card has these memory chips damaged and was in an oven, I don't think that there, there was an... We shouldn't be expecting an electrical issue, I just was double checking anyway. Um, I hope this is in a state where it can still run mats. And this will hopefully tell me which of the memory chips are making problems. Well, this one is going to show up as completely not working because it's missing. And this one that looks a bit cooked is probably also going to show up as dead. If that's the case, I just need to, um, well, retin this, this pad and then remove this chip, get replacements, solder them on, and then hopefully the cart will work. Um, but yeah, I've never swapped memory chips before myself. And yeah, so basically this might take a while um, because before I attempted at this card, I would probably take a, a dead donor card and try swapping memory modules on that one. And once I can do it um, with a high degree of confidence there, I would try it here. And that might take quite some time. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah, that's basically the multimeter phase of this card. Basically. Now we would try to turn it on, see if all the VRMs work at least, because if they don't, we have another issue we have to fix apart from the memory modules here. But if they do, and even if the card runs mats, I'm just gonna run mats on it, identify which memory modules make uh, are, doing, are making problems, and then replace those memory modules uh, that are making problems. The core looks pretty good. Sometimes you can just have a dead memory controller, like the memory controller is on the outside of the die, and sometimes the uh, side of the die darkens a bit, or more like the underfill of the die, like the... Uh... Yeah, I can't really... The thing that's between the uh, substrate and the and the die here, this, this part, this sometimes darkens when the memory controller is short and dead, but I can't really see anything here. This core looks pretty good, and so I hope that the core is actually good, and we just have some memory modules that are making problems. So, yeah. Uh, that concludes the uh, multimeter test phase for the 980Ti Strix. And we can now move on to try turning the card on and doing voltage measurements. So, um, this is a bit unexpected. So, we're gonna start Windows, and you're gonna see it crashing soon. But, this is Windows. And here's the 980Ti, and, and here this is what happens when the drivers load. The drivers are installed. Uh, I did boot this card before without the drivers installed and it was getting to desktop just fine, just, but once the drivers are installed this card obviously crashes because it still has a memory module missing. Um, but yeah, um, I, learned <laughs> I learned a funny thing, which is that yeah, these graphics cards are totally able to boot up with some of their memory modules missing, it just once the driver is running and like, yeah, it, then it obviously crashes because then it's trying to load uh, data into the memory module that's not physically there. Um, but yeah, so the fact that we saw a picture means that all of the voltage rails on this card actually work fine. Otherwise we wouldn't get a picture. So, um, from what I can tell now, the only issue with this card is that missing memory module and possibly the other memory module that is cooked as well. I'm going to run mats on this now. And then we will see which memory modules are um, making problems. So that's basically the next step. Um, but that we saw a picture already uh, tells me that this card is very, very fixable. I just need to figure out how to properly solve the memory modules because, as I said, I've never done that before. So, yeah, that, that will potentially be a challenge and it might take a while for me to do that, which 
might mean that once I run maths on this, the video is going to end and there's going to be a part two later. Um, or I'm just not going to publish this video uh, as long as I haven't fixed it. However, I think it's more gonna be option A. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna run maths on this now to see uh, which of the memory modules are our problem. The card finished running maths now and yeah, of course we got a fail. And yeah, so basically the USB stick that Matt's boots off and now has a TXT file on it that we're going to open and look into and that will tell us um, which of the memory modules are producing errors here. Of course there's going to be at least one because that one is entirely missing, but there could also be other modules on the card that are faulty and if that is the case we will now see which ones those are. Okay, so we have our report here and we can actually see that it is three memory modules that are faulty. So. This one is probably the one that is entirely missing because, well, yeah, it, there's nothing that it can't write. But we see we have two other memory modules as well that are faulty. Specifically, uh, A, um, well, I, I think it was A1, A0, B1, B0. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I have this picture here to, to help you understand what it is. So basically going against uh, against the clock, um, so there's a picture of the 980 Ti, so, so we're going this way. Um, and the first one is the uh, 63 module and that one is the 31 module. So 63, 31, 63, 31. So we know that our 63 in bank A, which is this module, is faulty. Then we know that 63 in bank B, which is this one, is also faulty. And then, of course, 63 in bank C, which is the missing one, is obviously faulty. So it is this module, this module, and this module that need to be replaced. And this one that looks slightly cooked is actually completely okay, because as you can see, there is no, there are no errors whatsoever on this card. So now we have identified um, the problem on the graphics card, and basically replacing those memory modules should make the card operational again. Um, however, as I said, I've never replaced memory modules before and I do want to practice before I do it to this card um, because there is a chance that I can make it much much worse than it already is and I would rather ruin a donor board than this card which is potentially fixable. So I think this is where part one of the video ends uh, and then sometime later I can't really give you an ETA on it um, there's going to be a part two where I uh, will attempt to swap out these memory modules and then hopefully get a working 980 Ti in the process. So thank you all for watching, hope you enjoyed and until next time, goodbye.